Hello, star friends. You're watching Earth Sky. I'm Deborah Bird. And I'm John Goss. We're here with 10 reasons you can love the partial solar eclipse coming up on March 29th, 2025. And even that's true, even if you can't see it in your sky, this eclipse won't be visible from most of North America, except for the far northeastern part. So more about that shortly. Uh, but first, here's John with reason number one to love the March 29th partial solar eclipse. Well, here we go. Reason number one, the solar eclipse is synergy. That's a strange word. Synergy is simply the alignment of the sun, moon, and earth in that order. Um, during the solar eclipse event, the moon's shadow falls on the earth, and on March 29th, we'll have a deep partial solar eclipse, which means that you'll need a pair of these uh, throughout the eclipse. Um, the, the outer shadow of, of, of the moon's shadow, it's, it's not as dark as the umbral, but it will fall on the earth. Now the sun will only be partially obscured while the umbral or darkest part of the earth shadow completely misses earth. Deborah? Okay, so, um, so it's a partial eclipse. And even if this eclipse isn't visible in your sky, here's the second reason to love it. And that is it'll be visible in some people's skies. So we've got some live stream links, which we'll be showing shortly. Uh, the partial eclipse of March 29th, 2025 will be visible from the Northeastern North America, Greenland, Iceland, the North Atlantic Ocean, most of Europe, and Northwestern Russia. It'll still be dark with the sun below the horizon for most of the continental U.S. when this eclipse takes place. So most of the continental U.S. won't see this eclipse, but a few people will see it. For example, in New York City, the eclipse will be visible at sunrise, and John has more about eclipse times. Here's yet one more reason to love this eclipse. As Deborah just said, it takes place just after sunrise. Uh, we have a chart here showing six locations in either northern, northeastern United States or eastern Canada. New York City takes place, this, this chart shows it about five minutes after sunrise. New York's, look at about uh, uh, 7.03 a.m. You'll see a little chunk taken out of the, out of the sun. And remember, you gotta be wearing these glasses to see this. Uh, Boston a little bit more, Bangor, Maine a little bit more, Fredericton, uh, uh, New Brunswick a little bit more. Deeper into Canada, uh, Montreal and Quebec City, you'll see even a, a, a bigger, especially Quebec City, a bigger chunk. Remember that when you're seeing this, you, you yourself are looking at the moon that's about 221,000 miles away, moving in front of the sun, which is 93 million miles away. So you are in the middle of a cosmic alignment. Deborah? Okay, I'm ready. So most people in North America can't see this, and that means we get to sleep in. So we'll wake up in the morning of March 29th with images of the eclipse already pouring in. So this is a beautiful eclipse image from a member of the Earth Sky community, Sue Waddell. Uh, she got it in Kentucky in 2017. Uh, and to see images like this of the March 29th eclipse, come to the community photo page at earthsky.org on March 29th. And if you do catch the eclipse and you want to submit a photo to our community, uh, you can do that right here. John? Another reason. We have a whole bunch of reasons. Um, eclipses... Solar eclipses can only happen at new moon. That is when the moon is between the earth and the sun. This new moon is a little bit different than others because it's a new super moon, because that means it reaches perigee or its closest point to the earth, uh, actually the day after this, but it's still very close and therefore appears to be a little bit larger in the sky than, than, than normal. But with, for a practical point of view on this, uh, it means that the moon and the sun's combined gravity is quite a bit higher than what it would normally, giving us higher tides uh, on the eclipse day and the day after or so. So keep your eye on the level of those tides and uh, hopefully we'll, they won't give us too much problems. Deborah. Okay, reason number six to love this eclipse. It's a deep 
partial eclipse. And so it'll be exciting for people who see it. So I remember when I was young and I was first starting in astronomy and I was helping out at a star party at the University of Texas out on the mall and we were watching a solar eclipse. And it didn't seem like that big a deal when the eclipse first started. But as the eclipse got deeper and deeper and deeper, there was just this excitement, like a ripple of excitement that just went through all the people that were standing out there trying to see it. So there's just something primal and emotional about seeing a deep partial eclipse. And personally, I never get quite that same feeling from watching online, but it is very interesting to watch online. And if you want to do that, here is a link to a live stream from our friends at timeanddate.com. And if for any reason that live stream is not working correctly, here's another one from the Royal Greenwich Observatory. So there are some live streams of this eclipse that you can watch. John? Reason number seven. It gives you a good excuse to dig around in your drawer, in your junk drawer, to find these that you use during the last few eclipses. Uh, people who are in uh, Northeast of the United States and Eastern Canada, uh, as well as all the folks in Northern Europe, gotta you got to have one of these babies to safely look at the sun. And I'd like to say just a few words about this. Um, these things are, are really safe to, to look at the sun as much as you want because they block out like one thirty thousandths of the incoming sunlight. So it really dims the sun down. But before you use these, check these out for any cracks or pinholes that you that may have happened since the last eclipse. And if it contains that, toss them out. And another uh, rule is never use any other optical aid with these other than prescription glasses. Do not use these with binoculars. If you follow these rules, you'll have a safe time to enjoy the eclipse. Deborah? Okay, and you might recall that we had a lunar eclipse earlier this month on March 13, 14, and the March 29 partial solar eclipse is related to that lunar eclipse in what's called an eclipse season. So that's a period of about a month during which the Earth, Moon, and Sun are able to line up in space. We have to be in an eclipse season as we are right now for an eclipse to take place. And 2025, we'll have more than one eclipse season. We've got another one about six months from now with a lunar eclipse on September 7th and a solar eclipse on September 21st. John? Reason number nine. Well, you just heard about eclipse seasons. Well, we got another term for you called the Soros cycle. It's kind of complicated to explain, but it really is just a confluence of three lunar orbital events uh, taking place. And these things happen about once every 18 and a half years. So if you look on the chart, you'll see the, the similarly shaped patterns of the moon across the surface of the Earth uh, going from the lower uh, right down to the bottom. You'll see it, that's about 18 years apart, and they're all about 18 years apart as you go, go across. Uh, this is a. Uh, this means that uh, the Earth will be in about the same relative spot, but not exactly on each one of these events. So these eclipses are all related. They'll be in different portions of the Earth to see, but still, they're there. Deborah. Okay, and. This eclipse is eclipse number 21 of 71 eclipses in Saros cycle 149. So, okay, reason number 10 to love this solar eclipse. And this is actually my favorite reason. And that is whether you can see it or not, it's a great cosmic event to think about. And you know, we're on a planet that's whirling through space in orbit around a sun that's flying at hundreds of miles per second around the center of our Milky Way galaxy. And yet somehow in the midst of all this motion, worlds can align in space and we get an eclipse like the one coming up on March 29th. That's our show. I'm Deborah Bird. And I'm John Goss. We're with Earth Sky. Thank you for watching. We hope you'll subscribe, like, and share. One Earth, one sky, Earth Sky. <laughs>